Hey everyone, it's Dr. Dickinson. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to create a hyperdoc for a math class. You can, of course, use a hyperdoc with any subject area, but this particular one, I'm going to be looking at a concept that students are working on in sixth grade math, and that standard is equations and expressions. Now, if you've looked at those math content standards for equation expressions, you know there's so many skills that they need to be able to do explicitly in the context of learning a standard. So a hyperdoc is great because it's gonna give those different uh, skills. It's gonna allow the students to work through those different skills. It's gonna allow you as the teacher to see like, where are the kids getting stuck? How can I you know, best support them? And you know, for my kids that are moving along quickly, how can I provide more challenge? And for those students that I really need to drill down and give some, some more support, I can do that in my class. All right, so let's do this. Again, HyperDocs is our, our Google Docs. As you can see here, this is a three by three grid. So there's a total of nine squares and each square has a particular math activity related to equations and expressions. Now, in the middle of here, I have a cute little image. My students will be um, reading the directions, right? And then I'll be reminding them about what to do says here, start in the top left corner and work your way clockwise around the board. Yeah, and if you get stuck completing a box, find an amigo or amiga to help you. Share your evidence below. So there is a evidence sheet for my students to write down what did they learn. Now, you want to make sure that if you are creating these hyperdocs, you set it to uh, view only, which actually is in the share button or here in the share button okay and students have only can view it that way i know that they're not going to change any of my activities and they have to make a copy so that will allow them to have their own copy of this document and share their work okay feel free to rewind if i'm going too fast so again starting with the top left corner I'm trying to create a low floor and a high ceiling for my task. So the task will become increasingly challenging as they move around clockwise in this board. So starting here with the first yellow square, and I've color coded it, and that will help them when they're sharing their video, their notes here in the evidence below. They're so gonna click on this video link. This is a math antics video that reviews some of the basic ideas about what an expression is and how to solve expressions and equations. And so that's a great review for my kids. We've talked about it in class, but you know, they need to hear it more than once. And lots of times they need to hear more um, from than from just me, their classroom teacher, because what I can go Charlie Brown mode too, friends. Okay. The second activity I love, if you haven't tried Desmos, it's phenomenal. I'm just going to sing for that because it's phenomenal. The Desmos activity also allows students to investigate express equations. And because you've made a teacher account, you don't have to actually ask your students to take a snapshot or share any evidence with you. It's all in your account. So students just click on this hyperlink here, then they'll type in the class code and I can log in and see their work. Now in the evidence below, I've just asked them to share two things that they learned and a question that they have after they've completed this activity. All right, on to our next purple rectangle. It's a Quizlet, and you've probably thought, yeah, I've heard of Quizlet, it's great for vocabulary, matching, well, hey, you're matching an equation and expression, you should definitely check out this Quizlet. So they just, again, click on the Quizlet link. It's gonna take them to the activity. They can play different kinds of activities. Um, the matching one is lots of fun. They can also go through the flashcards and just test themselves, trying to figure out what does the variable equal, okay? And they move through these different activities. All right, moving back to my hyperdoc. We're going down. 
The Khan Academy. Khan is free. Khan is awesome. Parents love it because they've never done Common Core math. And now they get to watch a video by Khan to remind them or to teach them for the first time some of these skills that their kiddos are learning. So you can also have your kids work on these activities in the classroom. You create a teacher account. Your students log on. You can assign specific um specific skills that you want them to work on. So here there's a whole bunch of activities that they log into their student account, which is also synced with Google Classroom, and they're gonna complete the assignments that I've given them, including a quiz, and I can monitor their progress once again. Quizzy, fun math game here. They're gonna go through this module. It's kind of like a Jeopardy, Jeopardy style game. They will enter my class code so that I can monitor their progress. Then I've created a assessment on Google Forms, which is also awesome because they've added this really cool feature where I can give them immediate feedback by validating their responses. So here's the back end, what the students will not see. They see their email address and they have to answer it. So there's the um, Problem, Gracie has four dimes and some nickels. The total value for coins is $2.25. Write an equation for this. Now I have validated it so that they have to have an, write an expression. It should contain four tenths plus five hundredths times X equals two and 25, $2.25. I'm gonna say $2.25. So now if they don't answer correctly, it could pop up and say write as decimal values. Um, again, so these are different options. If you're feeling like this is just too much, I can shut off this as well. Uh, again, I have the option of choosing how I want them to validate how, what kind of response I want them to get. So they have multiple opportunities to try and solve the problem with an answer. Maybe they got it wrong the first time. It's okay for them to ask for help. It helps me know where they're struggling as well. And it's all a Google form. So guess what? Next year I can use it again without having to create anything. Back to my HyperDoc. We checked out the assessment. The next one is a video tutorial, just like I'm doing here, a video tutorial in HyperDoc. My kiddos are gonna create their own video tutorial using Educreations. If you haven't checked out Educreations, another free fun tool for your kids. It allows them to create videos, or you can create videos for them too. And guess what? Instead of watching here, Mr. Math Antics in our yellow square, they can be watching you, the classroom teacher, explain how to solve an equation. There's a class code, so you can actually create codes for your kiddos so that they can have their own account. Here's my student, Aiden, and he's created a video on dividing decimals. So that is for me here to video to watch. Um, and finally, yeah, we're getting to the highest level of blooms, my friends. My kiddos are gonna create a Google slide with one problem that can be shared with the class. So yay, please don't put anything inappropriate. And then they'll write their answer in the notes section. This is a great way for me to include warm-ups in the class that are created by my other students. Also, it's a good opportunity for me to assess what my kids know. Again, HyperDocs, they create, um, they work through all of these active links. They share their evidence here. They can include a URL to their work. And you can keep continuing to make a copy and making your own HyperDocs for all of your units for any subject area. And it's so much fun. The kids really love it. So be sure that you add a comment to this video and I will personally share this HyperDoc with you. All right, thanks so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Take care, peace.